A two-step experiment means you're doing more than one thing. For example, I might be flipping two coins. This table here shows the outcomes. I can get a head with the first coin and a head with the second, a tail with the first coin and a head with the second, head, tail and tail, tail. There are four outcomes and so I can use that to help me work out probabilities. The probability of getting two heads is one out of four because there are one way, there's one way of getting two heads and there are four possible outcomes. The probability of getting one tail is actually two out of four and that's because I can get one tail here and one tail here. And that ends up being a half. The probability of getting a head and then a tail is actually only equal to 1 over 4 because I have to get the head first and then the tail second. I can't get the tail and then the head. And the probability of getting at least one head means that I need to have a head in any of the outcomes. All three of these have got a head in them. So the probability of getting at least one head is 3 out of 4. So let's have a look at calculating some probabilities when I take these beads out of this bag and replace them each time I take one out. So first of all, what I'm going to do is use this tree diagram. It's called a tree diagram because it has branches like a tree that's spread out. The first branching is showing my first event, taking the first bead out of the bag. And I, there are two things that can happen. I can get a blue or a green. So this section here is the first trial, the first time I take something out, and it goes all the way down here. So all these things are the possibilities in the first trial. The possibilities are I could get a blue or a green. If I get a blue the first time, then when I do my second trial and take another bead out, I've again got two possibilities. I could get a blue and a green. And that's the second trial. So you can see this tree diagram shows me all the things that could happen. I can get a blue and then another blue, a blue and then a green, a green and then a blue, or a green and a green. If we were to work out the probabilities of those to happen, we need to give probabilities to each of the different trials. So what you do is you look at the first trial, there are five beads. The chance of getting a blue is three out of five. So I'm going to write that there. The chance of getting a green is two out of five. Two greens, five balls. Notice that um, three fifths and two fifths adds up to one, five fifths. If I'm following this path along here, and I've already taken a blue ball out and replaced it or returned it back in, then what can happen is I can get a blue the second time or a green. Still got a blues and greens in the bag. For this second trial here, which is all of these possibilities down here, trial two, I can get a blue again, and that's a three-fifths chance of getting a blue, or a two-fifths chance of getting a green. If I follow this path, the same thing happens. Three-fifths and two-fifths. To work out the probability of getting two events in a row, we use this rule up here. The probability of A intersection B is probability of A times probability of B. And that will work in this case because the two events are independent of each other. Okay, so let's have a look at the first one. The probability of getting a blue and another blue is the probability of multiplying those two answers together. So the probability of blue intersection blue is equal to three fifths by three fifths, which is nine twenty fifths. If I keep going down this second trial, I'll be multiplying three-fifths by two-fifths, two-fifths by three-fifths, and two-fifths by two-fifths, which means I'll get four twenty-fifths for, for getting green-green, 
six 25ths for getting green and then blue, and six 25ths for getting blue and then green. Adding on all those up will give me 25. 25ths. It's possible to use a probability tree for lots of different sorts of events. Let's have a look at this event that we've got here. I've got a four-sided dice. It's only got four sides, and at the moment it's showing four because four's at the top. And I've got a coin, which can be heads or tails. If I'm looking to see what could happen, I'm going to pretend that the first event is flipping the coin. So here is my tree diagram, and my two possibilities are heads and tails. Now if I roll the four-sided die, there are four possibilities. I can get a one, a two, three, or four. And down here the same thing. One, two, three, four. So the combinations I can get with a coin and a four-sided dice are head and one, head and two, head and three, head and four, tail and one, tail and two, tail and three, tail and four. The probability of getting a head or a tail are both the same, they're both a half. The probability of getting a one from the four-sided dice, or die, is one out of four. And all the other sides are equally likely. They're all a quarter. And again, down here, they're all a quarter. That means the chance of getting a head and, and a one is a half times a quarter. So the probability of head intersection 1 is equal to a half times a quarter, which is an eighth. Well, it sort of makes sense if you think about it, because there are eight different things that can happen. And each one is equally likely. So a head and a tail are equally likely. One, two, three, four are equally likely. Sometimes we get strange ones. For example, if I said to you, um, what's the probability of getting a even number, and I don't care about the heads or tails, well then there's actually head and two, head and four, tail and two, tail and four. That would be four lots of an eighth, or four eighths, which turns out to be a half. So the probability of getting an even number is equal to 4 over 8, because each one of these is a half times a quarter, which makes an eighth, and there are four of them. So I'm going to get 4 eighths, and that cancels down to a half. Another way of showing what can happen when we have two events is to actually use a table. In this table here, we're rolling two dice. Along the top here, I've got one dice. One, two, three, four, five, six. Down the left, I've got the other dice. One, two, three, four, five, six. I can get two ones, a one and a two, a one and a three, etc. We can use this to help us work out what the probabilities are of getting certain outcomes from the two dice. So let's have a look at the first one. The probability of getting two ones. That's going to be equal to 1 out of 36. There is only one result that has two ones. There are 6 by 6, 36 total outcomes. One favourable outcome. 36 possible outcomes. Now let's look at the next one, which is actually getting at least one 4. To get a 4, I need to be in this column or in this row. Now there are 6 in each, but one of those is used twice, so it's actually only 11 possibly possible favor out, favorable outcomes. So the probability is going to be 11 over 36. And in the last one, a number less than 3, well, there's quite a few places where the number is less than 3. 
these two rows and these two columns all have a number in them that's less than 3. So the probability of getting that is 20 over 36, because there are 20 numbers here, and there is only 16 here. That means 20 over 36 is a probability of getting a number less than 3, which turns out to be 5 ninths. There are some games like Monopoly where you roll two dice and then you add the two numbers on the two dice together to get a total. So in this table here, I've shown the different totals you can get depending on what you roll. If you roll two ones, the total is two. If you roll two sixes, the total is twelve, etc. You notice that with this arrangement, there are a lot more sevens than any other total. Let's work out some probabilities. The probability of getting a total of 2 is 1 out of 36. There is only one total of 2. The probability of getting a double is where you get two numbers the same. That's these ones in this diagonal along here. So you can see there's six of those because you can have two ones, two twos, two threes, etc. So the answer to that is... 6 over 36, or 1 sixth. The probability of a total greater than 10 just means we need to have these three here, which would be 3 out of 36, which is 1 twelfth.